Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, this is Judy, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, hi, hello, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm back once again to recap another episode of the critically acclaimed, award-winning reality television show, The 1000 Pound Sisters, starring our girls, Tammy and Amy Slayton. And I am very excited to get started in talking about this episode, but I do have a few housekeeping PSAs, moments, situation types of deals to make before we get into that. One involving my health and two involving Tammy's health. So if you want to skip over those things, then I, I will leave a, a timestamp for when the actual recap of the episode starts so that you can click around to your heart's content. But I do have to say that this episode was a little bit delayed on my end because I got a mild concussion. <laughs> I, I wish there was like some fun story to tell about it. It's really embarrassing. The day after Thanksgiving, Noel, our friend, we were all going to the Olive Garden and I was just excited and I was going down the stairs in my stairwell of my apartment a little too quickly and I am a tall person, hashtag tall people problems, I'm six foot two and I was going down too quickly and I like bonked my head right here on the ceiling, <laughs> on the ceiling. It was like, oh, it was so bad, it hurt real bad and here we are. The past few days I have had really blurred vision and really bad headaches. I did talk to a doctor. I wanna assure you I've taken all precautions as recommended by my doctor. I'm feeling much better today and the only reason I'm telling you about this in this moment is that I think my energy is probably still going to be a little bit off and two, I was watching the actual episode in parts because I was supposed to like slowly be reintroducing myself into screen time because I don't know if you could guess but screen time is triggering for blurred vision and headaches <laughs> and concussions and so I watched it in parts and I took notes in parts and I also have like taken a break from even like working on this video since I watched it. So normally whenever I film one of these recap videos, I watch it all at once, take notes all at once, and then immediately after I get done watching, I turn on the camera and start filming my recap. So then I have my notes so I can remember specifically, but then I also have like my recent memory of what I just watched to comment on. I don't have that recent memory <laughs> anymore. I mean, I do remember what I watched, but like it's my ideas are not as fresh in my head. So if the energy um, or the pacing or uh, the general like knowing every single thing that happened in the episode seems off this week, that's why I think by next week I should be able to return to normal behavior. The other thing I just want to comment on is I'm sure most of you probably saw my video update on Tammy Slayton's health and I'm mostly just saying it in case you didn't. That's really the only reason there's an update but she's been in the hospital. I'll link the video about that in case you did miss it and I cards and also um, probably in a pinned comment down below. So go make sure to watch that. I will just say thank you to all the people who have been kind, respectful, regardless of how you feel about Tammy on the show or Tammy on the internet. You know, I appreciate the people who are showing goodwill to a person who's clearly not in a great place. You know what I'm saying? And just because a person does something that you don't like on a reality television show uh, doesn't mean that you have to like wish horrible things on them, okay? So thank you to the people who haven't been doing that. And if you have been doing that, honestly, shame on you, honestly. So with all that being said, <laughs> I, that, that little introduction actually was shorter than I anticipated. I was like, I'm gonna talk way too long about all of these things. Uh, with all of that being said, let's get into the recap. So if you don't remember, last week's episode was mostly, well, a good chunk of it was about finding a nurse for Tammy to come take care of her, like a ho home health care worker type of situation. So maybe not technically a nurse, but like a nurse. It's a nurse. It's a, there was somebody that took offense by me calling 
calling that person a nurse and said that it was like offensive to RNs. But like I've grown up with all kinds of people from like Ellen's to CNAs to whoever, whatever in my family. And like they all do really hard work that is important and helpful. And actually my sister-in-law used to be a home health care nurse, like like the, the nurses in this situation. And so I know that that stuff takes a lot of work. And if we're going to get technical over names, I don't know. But they've referred to it as a nurse on the show. And that's how I'm going to continue referring to the, the person in this situation. And in this situation, it's Tisa, actually, that got picked. And I was not expecting Tisa to be the one to get picked. And actually, a lot of you after last week's episode were like, oh, I saw Tisa in the previews for next week's episode. And I was like, oh my gosh, y'all got these super sleuth eyes because I did not see it. I did not see that. And they really didn't give her a lot of screen time compared to the other two. So I just wasn't expecting her to be picked. But um, I am happy with their choice. I enjoy Tisa's approach to everything because she seems to be like an actual balance of like, hey, I'm going to keep you company and be friendly with you and also try to push you, which I don't know. I feel like I feel like Amy is not entirely on board based on this episode, but I kind of, I I think she was doing her best. So the first episode or the first scene rather that we see is Amy and Tammy meeting Tisa for the first time for her first day of work and they're in Tammy's apartment. And one thing I do have to say before we get to anything is there is this shot of Amy holding Gage on the couch and there's a little like end table next to the couch and there's like a whole ashtray full of cigarette butts and I'm just like who in this home is smoking? Who in Tammy's home is smoking when homegirl is on oxygen? Which like to be fair I think I covered or showed a picture in some video about Tammy Slayton I did at some point. I mean, I feel like she's probably made some questionable choices while being on oxygen, but I was just like kind of surprised to see that as a part of the environment, the, uh, as a part of the, uh, the aesthetic. It, it kind of caught me off guard. And the first scene with Tisa goes, I think, about as you would expect. There's a little bit of butting of heads between Tammy and Tisa. Amy obviously is pushing for Tammy to do more, and Tammy doesn't want to do <laughs> more. And they also have a scene where Tisa and Tammy cook some food together, and of course Tammy's complaining because Amy didn't get the right whoever whatever, which is still very annoying to me as a concept because it's just like, girl, you could just not eat at all. You could just not eat at all if ta if Amy didn't go and get you your food. So maybe we shouldn't be complaining too much. We shouldn't be biting the hand that feeds us quite literally. And there's this one conversation that Amy has with Tisa where she's like, listen, you got to stick to your guns. And I just, I remember this a little bit from last week's episode, but Tisa just has these reactions to, to things that Amy says that I'm like, I'm not sure if she's like faking her surprise or her reaction or not but either way it slays me tammy can be kind of stubborn sometimes so stick to your guns oh really no matter how much she gets pissed off does she act like that yeah she's rude at sometimes really yeah she don't get her way she's rude oh she's burned every bridge she had i'm the last family member with a green oh and overall, I do think Tisa's trying to push back on Tammy um, to the point that Tammy does talk about it in a confessional. She she has this to say about Tisa and compares Tisa to her sister. Having Tisa around is a lot better than having Amy around. Tisa is not going to argue with me. And if she does, she's like playful, where Amy's just a bitch. And in all honesty, I don't I don't like the language that Tammy uses. I don't understand why she has to be so harsh towards Amy. I'm I'm on the same page as a lot of you, I promise. I while I do, you know, think that Tammy is still human, I don't understand why she's gotta be so harsh towards her sister. But I will say, I will say that I I think I hope that this sets them up because honestly, I feel like Amy and actually all of Tammy's siblings have to get out of this like caretaker role if they want to have like a genuine relationship with their sister because all of their relationship right now is based on taking care of her and she doesn't like the way that they're taking care of her and thus she has all this resentment towards them where I think that they could have a better relationship if 
if that role was taken care of by somebody else and Amy could just focus on being a sister to Tammy. And Amy actually ends up saying that <laughs> in literally the next scene where they go get a little bit groomed because... Amy's like, listen, now we can just do fun things like we used to do, and I don't have to worry about being the bad guy. And I'm 100% on the same page as that. So if this isn't your first time watching one of my recaps, you know that I always do a little bit shot of the week. Uh, but this whole, whole episode gives one whole scene to Little Bit this week. I'm so excited. They have not given her a story arc like this it, at all in three seasons. They have not given her this much time and attention. And I just love to see it. Now, personally, I don't know the last time I went to the Gerbers with my dogs. Well, literally, I just took my dogs to the Gerber yesterday. But never have I sat there and watched every step. So I love to see the production of TLC being like, listen, we need content. So, hey, groomer, let us come in and, and watch every step of the way. But listen, we got, there, there's not a single, just one little bit shot of the week. Like this whole scene is a little bit shot of the week, including Amy, like giving a description of, of little bit being her ass monkey. Me and Tammy are bonded at the hip to a little bit because she's my ass monkey. A little bit nutty, it's not Tammy. <laughs> But they are a lot alike. They're both family. We all love each other. And they're both my bitch! I'm not entirely sure what an ass monkey is, honestly. Maybe somebody could clarify in the comments for me. We all know that Amy has an interesting way with words, and that is not a phrase I would personally use to describe any of my dogs or people in my life, but... I do appreciate uh, the poetic nature of <laughs> Amy Slayton. There's also a lovely, lovely, lovely moment where they talk about expressing little bit's anal glands. Sometimes dogs, they'll get like a fishy smell or something like that, or they're scooting their butt, or they'll be biting above their tail. That's their anal glands filling up and they need them expressed every now and then. Do we have a gland by our ass, too? Or is that just animals? That's a serious question. And honestly, you know what? I'm including this here because this episode really had a lack of farting and a lack of fart jokes. And because of that, you get to you get to deal with this. You get to talk about anal glands. We get to talk about anal glands here, okay? Can I say it one more time? Anal glands? We're, we're talking about anal glands because there weren't enough fart jokes. TLC, I'm going to need you to step up the game. Because I'm sure in several of these scenes, Amy was farting. And you didn't include one fart scene? You can give me one fart scene this week? And while, while they're at the dog groomers, Tammy and Amy start talking about how they're going to celebrate Mother's Day to bring back Mama Slayton, who we famously haven't seen since season one. She took season two off, I think probably because there was a lot of negative backlash for Mama Slayton in season one. She didn't come across super great. And <laughs> they, they discuss Mother's Day's options to celebrate because also it is Amy's first Mother's Day as, as a mother. Uh, and so they want to do something special. And they end up settling on taking Mama Slayton to high tea. And <laughs> they really don't know a lot about British culture and mostly talk about British foods. And the part that really slayed me was Amy wondering if this was... British culture, British food. We love everything about the British culture here, the accents. And they got all the best candies over there. <laughs> <laughs> you fat as hell. <laughs> Overseas has the best junk food. Don't even have to be junk food. It can be regular healthy food. But you've eaten British healthy food? There's New England Kingdom chowder kilt. No, it doesn't. Girl, not, not the New England clam chowder. Not this. Oh, Amy girl. Amy. Amy girl. But at the end of that scene, Little Bit looks so cute with a bow on. So if I had to pick one shot of the week, it's probably this this little clip of, of her all completed with the bow looking super cute and adorable. 
So two weeks after the little bit grooming situation, or at least what TLC tells us is two weeks after that, <laughs> we find out that Tammy has had a visitor. She has had a gentleman caller come see her at her home, at her abode, which we all know is Philip, the BBW king. And I have actually covered this particular time when it was happening <laughs> on the internet and things like that in videos. So I'll leave a playlist of all the slate sister videos and maybe like pick out a couple videos in particular about the BBW King for you to go watch. Around this time also was when Tammy was allegedly getting involved in like the merch scam scandal, whoever, whatever, which I feel like they're probably not going to cover on the show at this point, but it was also something that was going on around the same time. And yeah, so our girl meets up with Philip, aka the BBW King, and she claims that she can see a long life ahead of her with Philip, which like, spoiler alert, I'm pretty sure they're broken up, so maybe not so much. And she also talks about his persona online not being who he is and like not being his whole identity. Yes, he does have a persona on the internet, but it doesn't define who he is. And so he likes big girls. He's just a supporter. And he knows very well that I'm on a weight loss journey and he's okay with it. He's all for me losing weight and getting healthier. No, he don't want me to get under 300 and I'm fine with that. A couple things I want to note about this particular clip is one that Tammy said that in this part of the episode, okay, because it's going to be important because it comes up later. She said in this part of the episode, and who knows if this was edited to look different or whoever, whatever, but it's still important that she said it, which is she said she's fine with not getting below 300 pounds, that she knows that that's something that's a concern of his and that she does not have a problem with it. So she is saying that when she first talks about it here, okay? Just keep that, tuck that away into the little brain folds, tuck it away and be ready to pull it out a bit later. I do wanna talk about this idea of him not being defined by this persona when it's literally the only thing he puts onto the internet. His entire social media persona account, whoever, whatever, is talking about BBWs, big, beautiful women. It's his whole personality. Like, I couldn't tell you anything else about this person. I mean, he literally also was on Dr. Phil once upon a time to discuss this, okay? I covered that in a video, too. So, like, this is his whole, like, internet pseudo-celebrity status persona. So, how you can say that this isn't the only thing that defines who he is when that's all that like publicly he shared. Like we we have nothing else to, to go off of, Tammy girl. Like for me, this is his personality. This is all I know about him is that he loves BBWs. So we will get more into that because it does come up again at the end of the episode, but we are gonna pivot and go to the Mother's Day high tea moment, which I think uh, was just like classic 1,000 pound sisters, like no drama, just pure like laughs and fun. And I appreciate when they include the scenes like that because that's my favorite thing about the Slayton sisters. I, as much as like I can get into the drama, the fighting, the tea, the whoever, whatever, I think it's always just fun to see them having a good time and they <laughs> were having a good time at the IT. I will say it doesn't come without Tammy complaining about Amy being a mom, which honestly she needs to just get out of that. She needs, uh, she's not helping herself and helping people think that she's not jealous of, of Gage or Amy or whoever, whatever. Like she needs to just stop stop complaining about Amy being a mom because it's like not a good look. I will say, uh, I'm gonna show you a clip of Tammy coming up in the lift. Now, I actually really care a lot about accessibility. I think that it's important for everybody. So this is in no way a dig on accessibility matters or like people using tools to get around. What I think is just actually really funny about this clip is <laughs> all the shots they show of like all the snooty people and then also the shot of like Mama Slayton in the foreground and Tammy in the background. Well, I I'll just show you and you'll see.
I don't know. It was just so funny to me that all these snooty people who, honestly, I would also feel uncomfortable around. I don't like, like, situations. I don't like that. I don't like to be in those situations. I'm way more laid back than that. And so I just, like, loved the idea of these three women coming in and shaking up all of the etiquette of these places. Which, speaking of etiquette, there is a woman there who is there to teach them about high tea and proper, proper etiquette. In Amy's words, This Mary Poppins looking bitch. <laughs> oh, she's in for it. <laughs> We're gonna break this lady. Okay. <laughs> I have to say, Mama Slayton looked as miserable as ever. She refused to try the tea because it wasn't cold, which like, Tammy and Amy planned this because they said that Mama Slayton loved tea so much, and <laughs> turns out she only likes the cold tea, which, relatable, I hate hot beverages. I only drink like a hot cup of coffee first thing in the morning because it really gets me going and wakes me up and stimulates me. Uh, but, <laughs> but outside of that, I'm not drinking any hot beverage. And apparently Mama Slayton just doesn't have a refined palate like Tammy. She, she doesn't, you know, uh, appreciate the finer things in life like hot tea, like Tammy and Amy do. And honestly, too much was happening in this scene that I'm just like trying to piece together every funny little moment. But I will, I will share, because there was a lack of fart jokes, uh, I will share this old man ball joke from, <laughs> from Amy. Oh my god, that tea tastes like old man balls. How do you know what old man balls taste like? I've been with a few old people. I wouldn't admit that. So have you. No. Uh -huh. Jerry. Well. And of course, everything at the end of this scene does have to come back to weight loss. So we do get to see Tammy talking about how she thinks Amy's eating too much sugar. And we get to see Mama Slayton ask Tammy if she's trying to lose weight or not, if she's doing exercises, whoever, whatever, which I think, you know, is, is a good prelude to Tammy struggling to get back to the car and walking on her own and leads to a lot of questions in general about Tammy walking and things like that, that her family and even Tisa, the nurse, and folks are going to be concerned about in the remainder of the episode. Speaking of Tisa, the next scene we get is Tisa and Tammy working out together, which I, I think does demonstrate that, like, despite the laughs and giggles, like, Tisa is trying to work with Tammy on some stuff. But <laughs> Tisa does teach Tammy about the most important kind of exercise. Now, this is you can do yourself, <laughs> is those a Kegel exercise, you know, you just sit in your chair and do it. Huh? If you can shake that thing, I know you can. <laughs> Kegel. What is it? It's a Kegel. <laughs> Tighten up your butt muscles, and you can sit there and do that all day long. Huh? Kegel. Come on, it's good for court. <laughs> Come on. I think I'm doing them Kegels right now. And listen, I guess because the BBW King is around, she she might actually have to worry about that. I don't know. Y'all know I'm never trying to think about any of these people on this particular show in that type of way. So I'm just going to leave you with that mental image and we're going to keep on keeping on. Amy does have a conversation with Tisa because Amy's concerned that she just hears them like cutting up and laughing and whoever, whatever. But I think Tisa... It's, it's very clear, like, hey, I'm trying, and homegirl does not want to walk, and, like, wh what exactly is Tisa supposed to do? Pick pick Tammy up and make her start walking? Like, Tisa's one person, and I know that it is her job. Like, that is what Amy wanted, but, like, at the end of the day, Tisa can only do so much, just like Amy could only do so much, Chris could only do so much, Misty, whoever, whatever, could only do so much. You know what I'm saying? But it is kind of sad because Amy mentioned that in rehab, Tammy was probably doing like 30 to 45 minutes a day of like 
physical therapy and trying to get her up and walking and things like that and it seems like that's just all come to a screeching halt. So that brings us to really the last section of this episode which is focused on Tammy and the BBW King and uh, not much of it's lighthearted from here on out. It's pretty, it's pretty confrontational. People are pretty upset. People in this case being mostly Chris and Misty. Uh, but before we get all to that, we do see Chris and his wife Brittany checking out Tammy's Instagram and a lot of it's like what we've already seen. There's things where they see the things about like the BBW King not wanting somebody to weigh less than 300 pounds or he'll leave them. They talk about like seeing like potential rumors of them being engaged and things like that. And I will say Chris does say something that I think is helpful in thinking about fetishizing people versus, you know, just like liking women of all body types, okay? Because I know we've had this conversation before about like just appreciating somebody for whatever size they are versus fetishizing them. And I really think that when you only focus on being attracted to the fact that somebody is morbidly obese and don't focus on liking the other things about them, like that's like the only thing you're focused on, I do think that that is like a fetishizing thing. And I think specifically him saying that he would leave somebody if they got down to a certain weight um, is concerning. And Chris specifically says like, that's really shallow. Like you, you would leave somebody if they stopped looking the way that they looked. And I think what is sometimes difficult to think about is like, if that was reversed, cause like we don't often in society think about like plus size people, morbidly obese people as being attractive, right? And so I think that that's why people like the BBW King get away with saying like, no, I'm just like appreciating women of all sizes. But if you reverse that, and if you thought about it in the, the case that like, oh, I would stop, I would leave you if you got over 299 pounds, right? Like if you got over 300 pounds, I think people would look on that pretty negatively. Like that's a pretty shallow, hateful thing to say. And so I, I just like, for me, none of it sits well with me. And I think rightfully so, Chris, Misty, Brittany, Amy, everybody in the family is concerned about this man. So Chris and Misty do make the decision to get together and go confront Tammy. And I guess Amy doesn't want to be a part of it because she just doesn't want the fight, which I think makes a lot of sense, okay? like. I think she's just full on done trying to fight with Tammy, which is why she also hired a nurse so she could remove herself from the arguments with Tammy because she just wants to be Tammy's sister. So I get it. I got it. Um, and I also understand why Chris and Misty do want to address it because they don't want it to turn into another Jerry situation. So they sit down, okay? They, they sit down in Tammy's apartment and before Misty can even get out what they want to talk about, Tammy's already on the defensive and she's like, if it's about my boyfriend, then you all can leave. And I was just like, wow, okay, defensive much? <laughs> like, chill, you didn't even let Misty talk. And then this is where I want you to take that thing I asked you to put in your brain folds, take it out now, because Misty expresses the concerns about the 300 pounds and below comment to Tammy. And Tammy says, he never said that to me. Even though he said, if you get under 300, he's out of here. He never said that to me. He never said that to you, but he's put it on social media. I know exactly what he puts on social media. Which is wild because just moments later in the episode, so we already know earlier in the episode, she said that she didn't care about that that comment or whatever. But then just moments later, talking to Chris and, and Misty, she says that he does actually say that he doesn't want her to get below 300 pounds. He don't want me to get under 300, but... Are you okay with him working out of your life if you're under 300 pounds? Yeah. I guess I'll have to wait until we get there. So it's just like, what a mess. What, what a mess. Like, clearly not being honest, not being forthright, not being truthful with her siblings. And on top of that, she makes excuses for the BBW King. She says that he, she is fully aware of what he puts on social media. But why is he doing like that and then being with you? He's trying to show other big women that they're beautiful too, like supporting them. Does he support you for your diet? Yes. And I just honestly, girl, 
Tammy is in denial. <laughs> Tammy's in denial about this man. And this this goes beyond just like supporting plus size women because there are ways that you can support plus size women without objectifying them, without uh, fetishizing them, right? Like there are all kinds of ways you can do that. And I, I personally do not believe that that's what this man is doing. And Chris gets really mad about this because Tammy is talking about how like they don't want anything good to happen for her, that they don't put trust in her, that they base everything about her in her past life, whoever, whatever. And and so Chris loses it. And being bad because you're cooped up in a house and you can't go? Where all we want to do is make sure you stay on track so you can be self-sufficient and go do whatever the hell you want when you want. But you're going to have to get off your ass and put you up to me. Because you done started pissing me off because you're trying to shut down right now. So I'm no, not. I'm sitting here talking to y'all. Which, like, I'm 100% with Chris here. Chris is saying what I was trying to articulate in the last episode I did about this, which is that if Tammy wants all this agency over her own life, then she needs to start doing the things that are going to let her have agency over her own life because... Tammy has had 30 some years of her own agency in her own life and it's led her to this spot. And so she needs to realize that that's just, that's what they're trying to get her to. Like she wants to go outside and do all these things and do whatever and live her own life. Then she has to do a lot of things before she can get there. So Chris leaves, but Missy sticks around to keep talking. They do, they do address also the, the question about whether or not Tammy's engaged. And Tammy says that, that she's not that it's not and she she goes on to say that she would like people to take her side every now and then it would be nice for someone to take my side every now and then which honestly girl i'm somebody who has tried to stick up for you who has tried to rationally argue in your favor and and i still will when when it's necessary or when i feel like it's appropriate but like girl you make it so hard <laughs> you make so hard. I just want you to hear that from me. If you won't listen to your siblings, like, you make it so hard for people to stick up for you because, like, you're constantly contradicting yourself. You straight up lied when you said that he never said the thing about the 300 pounds to you and then you followed it up with, like, oh, he did. Okay, so, like, you make it real hard to stick up for you. And Tammy does talk about how every time that they come over, it's just to, like, yell at her. And I do, I think, relate to maybe not relate, but I do understand where she's coming from, right? When every time that your siblings are coming over, it's just like a negative interaction. It probably is really frustrating. It probably is to constantly just be held accountable and things like that. And so I do think that that's like why Amy got to the point of like, I don't want my every interaction with my sister to be like this. Let's hire somebody else to do that for me. I think accountability is important in any kind of relationship and I do think what Chris and Misty are doing is important because they genuinely do care about her and I think that Tammy misses the point that her family does care because a lot of that care has come in in the form of like constructive feedback, accountability, and things that are tough when when you don't when you don't want to take accountability for like the negative things that are happening in your life. And then the the real shocker the the thing that ends kind of the episode is Tammy says, what if I don't want to get below 300 pounds? And we know how you get attacked. What if I don't want to get under 300? Now, is that you or him? Me. Because he's influencing you. No, he's not. And I think that's mostly concerning because honestly, let's just be real. That's putting the cart before the horse. Like you gotta, you gotta lose any kind of weight before we can even talk about what happens if you get to 300 pounds. But also it's concerning because like 300 pounds isn't necessarily like an ideal weight for most people. Like for most people, I think that 300 pounds is still like overweight and, and concerning. Uh, I, I mean, obviously each person has their own body and whoever, whatever, but like, I think there's lots of reasons that this is concerning. I also agree with Misty that the BBW King, whether intentionally or not, did influence some of Tammy's thoughts and feelings about whether or not she wanted to be below 300 pounds or not. 
Like, I don't think that that's a coincidence entirely. I mean, Tammy might have thought some of that before. I've I've heard other people. I mean, like, if you follow Amberlynn Reed, <laughs> like, she once upon a time used to say things like, I don't want to get that skinny. And, like, I, I think that that's, like, a trope also on things of, like, my 600-pound life and stuff like that. But to say that, like, just coincidentally, like, 300 pounds is the weight <laughs> that, that Tammy doesn't want to go below, like, and that that has nothing to do with the BBW you king mm, I'm not I'm not buying it I think it also explains why she wasn't initially honest with Chris and Misty about <laughs> about whether or not he had told her that that she couldn't get below 300 pounds um and so I just none of it's making sense to me and Tammy talks more about wanting people to just trust her which like how 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 do you trust Tammy, given her track record, and Tammy wants people to just forget her track record, but, like, honestly, like, that's, that's what you got. That's what you got going for you right now. So, I don't know. And Misty also talks about not wanting to bury Tammy, which I think is also scary, considering, like, the real-life stuff we know that has happened since filming happened. I mean, in the video that I talked about Tammy's health update. So, I'm just, I just, like, hope things get better and honestly I think again I just want to say that like for strangers on the internet that don't know Tammy okay like I think wishing certain things on Tammy or saying that she deserves certain things or whoever whatever is like a little harsh especially because I don't think that any of these people I mean like w at this point your your defense is like oh she's mean to her siblings well I don't think any of Tammy's siblings want anything bad to happen to Tammy and I think that that's evident on on the show and on social media and so I just I just think that like you know, despite her her treating them poorly, like, they still want the best for Tammy. And I'm taking their lead on things, and also just because it's, like, the right thing to do. But, like, if they all want the best for Tammy, I think that's also what we should all want. You know what I'm saying? So, I hope you enjoyed this week's recap. I'm sorry that it came a little bit later than normal, and I hope that it was, like, coherent and made sense to everybody. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe down below and hit the bell button so you get notifications. Also, make sure to leave me a comment, hit like, click share. I also have merch, so I'll leave a link to that in the description box if you want to go check that out. I'm very excited about it. Um, and also follow me on all of my social media. I had a whole lot of fun today. I hope you did too, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!